Give chemical explanations for the following statements. A. Bromine has a higher boiling point than chlorine. The reason why bromine has a higher boiling point than chlorine is because bromine has stronger London forces of attraction. You could also say induced dipole interactions, but it's important with this specification that you say London forces. Part B. A carton of milk expands on freezing. The reason why a carton of milk expands on freezing is because there are hydrogen bonds in ice, which hold the water molecules further apart than in water. To get the mark for this question, you must say the phrase hydrogen bonds in ice hold water molecules further apart. It's good to have the comparison to water so the examiner really knows what you're talking about for this question. C. Potassium is placed immediately after argon in the periodic table. The reasoning why potassium is placed immediately after argon in the periodic table is because potassium atoms have one more proton than argon atoms. It's important we say atoms in this statement and to get the mark for this question, we must state this phrase, potassium atoms have one more proton than argon atoms. That gets us this mark. And the reason this relates to the periodic table structure is because the periodic table is ordered with increasing atomic number. Part D. The reaction of ethane with chlorine under UV radiation is a poor method for preparing a high yield of chloroethane. The reason why this occurs is because further substitution occurs. And the type of substitution that occurs is known as free radical substitution. It's one of the mechanisms you'll learn about at A level. To get the mark for this question, you must say that further substitution occurs. Part E. Water has a concentration of approximately 56 moles per decimeter cubed. With water, approximately one decimeter cubed weighs 1000 grams. So then we can work out the moles of water. So in order to do this, we take 1,000 and divide by 18. This is using the equation triangle that involves mass at the top divided by moles times relative formula mass. The relative formula mass of water is 18. This equals approximately 56 moles. And then if we're working out concentration, we have 56 divided by 1 equals 56 moles per decimeter cubed. So we've proven what they've stated in the question. To get the mark for this question, you must correctly work out the moles of water and then infer that the concentration is 56 moles per decimeter cubed. F. The carbon-carbon bonds in benzene are all the same length. The reason why carbon-carbon bonds in benzene are all the same length is because pi bonds in benzene are delocalised. To get the mark for this question, you must say that pi bonds in benzene are delocalised. This statement gets the mark. This is because benzene has a delocalised pi ring system. And that's shown in some structures when you draw benzene because it's drawn with a ring rather than alternating double bonds. So here I'm drawing benzene as its ring structure, but it could also be drawn with alternating double bonds, but this structure resonates and has its alternate version where the double bonds are in the opposite places. But these resonance structures are forming the delocalized ring system. Part G. IR spectroscopy distinguishes ketones from carboxylic acids. The reason why infrared spectroscopy distinguishes between ketones and carboxylic acids is because carboxylic acids have a broad OH absorption peak. And this peak is between 2,500 and 3,300 centimetres cubed. Ketones do not have this peak, and so it's easy to identify where you have a carboxylic acid and when you have a ketone. 
To get the mark for this question, you must state that carboxylic acids have a broad OH absorption at between 2,500 and 3,300 centimetres cubed. Part H. 1.323 grams of N2O gaseous has a volume of 1 decimeter cubed at 100 kilopascals and 400 kelvin. For this question we're going to use the equation PV equals NRT and we're going to rearrange it for N or the number of moles. So we get N equals PV over RT. Next we need to convert the units we're given in the question. So for this equation we want meters cubed so that means converting the decimeters cubed into meters cubed and that would be 1 times 10 to the negative 3 meters cubed. Next we're going to convert the units of pressure so instead of kilopascals we want pascals so we have 100 times 10 to the 3 pascals and we want temperature in kelvin so that can remain the same. Plugging it into the equation we have n equals 1 times 10 to the minus 3 times 100 times 10 to the 3 divided by 400 times r. r is a constant that you get given in your data sheet and it is 8.314. So that gives us a number of moles of 0 0.0301 moles and we want grams. So then we use an equation triangle of mass divided by moles times relative formula mass. So that means we need to work out the relative formula mass of N2O and multiply this by our number of moles. So that would be 0 0.0301 multiplied by 14 times 2 plus 16 and that equals 1.323 grams. To get the mark for this question you must correctly work out the grams using the ideal gas equation PV equals NRT. I. 4.25 grams of C6H5COOCH3 contains 1.88 times 10 to the 22 molecules. Firstly, we're going to work out the number of moles of our compound. We're going to do this using the equation triangle mass over moles times relative formula mass. So we've been given the mass and we need to work out the relative formula mass. So what we're going to do is 4.25 grams divided by the relative formula mass of our compound. If we were to work this out, first let's count the number of carbons. There are 8 carbons in our compound, so we do 8 times 12. 12 is the relative formula mass of a singular carbon. Then we're going to add the number of hydrogens. There are also 8 hydrogens, and we're going to multiply this by 1, which is the relative formula mass of a singular hydrogen. Then we're going to add the number of oxygens and that would be 2 and we're going to multiply this 2 by the relative formula mass of a singular oxygen which is 16. And that gives us the number of moles and which equals 0 0.03125. We're then going to multiply 0 0.03125 by Avogadro's constant to get the number of molecules. Avogadro's constant is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 and that equals 1.88 times 10 to the 22 molecules. To get the marks for this question you must correctly work out the number of molecules in the compound so that's using mass divided by relative formula mass working out moles and then doing moles times Avogadro's constant. Part J the rate of hydrolysis of 1-bromobutane is faster than that of 1-chlorobutane. The reasoning for this is because the carbon-bromine bond is weaker than the carbon-chlorine bond. To get the mark for this question, you must say that the carbon-bromine bond is weaker.